You guys know how to Madison? Mm. Brad, please, let's get out of here. For God's sake, keep a grip on yourself, Janet. But it's, it seems unhealthy here. It's just a party, Janet. Well, I want to go. Well, we can't go anywhere till I get to a phone. Well, then ask the butler or someone. Just a moment, Janet. We don't want to interfere with their celebrations. This isn't the Junior Chamber of Commerce, Brad. They're probably foreigners with ways different than our own. They may do some more. Folk dancing. Look, I'm cold, I'm wet, and I'm just plain scared. I'm here. There's nothing to worry about. From the Roundtable at Uncle Studios and Beautiful, Southern California, welcome to another edition of Work on Matters, the central location for you employees, you employers, and of course, you independent contractors. My name is Steve Appel, and I'll be your host for the next hour with some talk, some news, and hopefully some answers about Work on Matters. Thanks for being part of the show, and if you can break away from your Work on Matters, feel free to give us a call and clue us in with your questions, comments, and or concerns. The phone number worldwide, 818-357-4120. You can send an email to wcexaminer at aol.com. Heck, you can be old school. Send me a fax, 818-475-1437. With me in studio, the chief of staff, Dr. Mike Zyma, the best dressed man in workers' compensation, Mr. Ted Durden, my protege, attorney Robert Ozeron, Scott Wald in the Bunkle studio is on the board taking care of technical difficulties. Back at work on Central, making sure the whole damn thing goes right, is Jake Paris. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Work Comp Matters. It's October 31st. It is Halloween at Uncle's studio. Uh, we've got uh, some treats here in the middle uh, of the round table. Uh, I was at the board today. I saw a lot of uh, female personnel humanoids wearing ears. It was very cool. And I've got a blind date tonight after the show. I'm trying to decide whether I should dress up or just go in my business garb or something like that. Robert was out last week. How are you feeling, my boy? Are you feeling okay? Yeah, feeling great. Uh, that's great. Ted, as always, is dressed fantastically. The doctor is in the house, and uh, I gave I got 15 points on the way over. Sorry to say that uh, Willie McCovey uh, passed away um, oh, wow. at 80 years old. Old stretch. Yeah, and um, you know we've we've got news, we've got talk. Um, and uh, I also wanted to ask Robert. You know, I went once. Uh, did you ever go to the uh, the Santa Monica Halloween Parade? I, oh, pardon me, the West Hollywood. I know you don't live in West Hollywood anymore, but you used to live in West Hollywood. Did you ever go to the parade? They're expecting, again, about half a million people there. You'll see it on the news. Did you ever check that out or no? I think maybe one time in passing. I'm not really a party guy. You know that. So. No, no, no. I know that. But I think, uh, I, think I might have driven by it one time. I, <laughs> I, I, I went one year. It was absolutely fantastic. It grows every year, and you'll, you'll see it on the news. Guys, if you get a chance, check it out. It is the biggest Halloween party in the friggin' world. I kid you not. I recall that you came to work the next morning in sunglasses, and that aroused some questions from certain people. Ab no, no. I, oh, yes, that's right. I did. I did. I was out there till about 1, 1 1.30 in the morning, and uh, I was going to hang out till about 2, 2.30 or 3. I think it was about 1.15, 1.30. Uh, at that time, I, I was alone, and I was on the sidewalk, and all of a sudden... I saw these two girls holding hands, skipping down the sidewalk, wearing see-through bodysuits. And they walked by, and I just stood up still. I gave them the old um, the salute, and I said, you know what? I've seen it all. Once you've seen that, um, it's hard to uh, expect anything else. And I figure, hmm, leave while you're ahead. And so I just took off uh, right from that point. 
Uh, my name is Steve Appel. You're listening to WorkCom Matters. We're brought to you by A1 Law Santa Monica Tickets and ABC ROGS. If you want the number one computer management system used by more workers' compensation attorneys in California than any other system in the damned Kuiper belt, give me a call at 818-357-4120. For your no-strings-attached money-back guarantee, $1 a day, A1 Law. If you want those hard-to-get, sold-out, even front-row concert sports theater tickets, give our buddy Brian a call at Santa Monica Tickets, 310 395 Eight five eight seven, and last but not least, here's a little something from ABC Rugs. ABC Rugs has been in the business of manufacturing and direct importation and exportation of Persian and Oriental rugs for more than 39 years. ABC Rugs is a direct importer and wholesaler of antique Moroccan, Oriental, and Persian rugs. Established in 1978. ABC Rugs is definitely old school. 323-897-5444. That's ABC Rugs. 323-897-5444. And uh, there goes ABC Rugs. Um, So it's been a heck of a a news uh, cycle this past week. But uh, before we get to the news, I want to ask everybody... um, of course, I have my blind date, and I have to decide whether or not I should dress up or not. Mike, are you doing anything or just going home? I am Halloween? completely avoiding Halloween, not out of spite, not because it sickens me or anything like that. I just want to go home, have dinner, and go to bed. <laughs> um, Ted, you, you, you've got a little uh, podcasting to do after the show, and right. then are you going home, or are you going out, or whatever, or just going home, and that's it for the night? I'll probably just go home. That's going to be it for the night. There you go. And uh, Robert, you're you're wearing um, black and white, so it seems to me like you might be going somewhere. You just wore that during the day. Uh, I just put that on for you, actually. Here. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I really appreciate it's like a skeleton that. T- style I, I love t-shirt, it. The skeleton you know? T-shirt. I'm trying to be festive, you know. I absolutely <laughs> love it. So, but but if you were going to ask me what I'm doing, you didn't ask after me if I'm going show. to a party. No, I'm ab- not. after the show, I'm, I'm okay. going home. You're just but going. I'm going home. to have trick or treaters. Probably stop by my front door, there and you, you know, I have all sorts of candy that I've purchased and have been slowly eating oh. in preparation <laughs> of their arrival. All right. So hopefully they arrive soon because I'm going to eat it all. Oh, uh, what a shame! What a shame! What does that word say on your shirt robert oh it's you know what this is my friend's band uh, sh- uh her name her name is francelle she's a country oh, singer okay. and it says and is, francelle that's what it says yeah francelle maria she's a country singer if you guys like country music feel free to check it out f-r-a-n-c-e-l-l-e correct, correct yeah okay. and um well that that's what all of us are doing after the show um I guess I'm going to uh, turn it over to uh, the chief of staff with the first news story. He keeps me in check and hopefully out of trouble at least 90% of the time with the first news story of the night on Work on Matters, Mr. Michael Zima. Dr. Michael Zima, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. This is a tough one, guys. Uh, Robert Bowers, <clears throat> the suspect in the shooting rampage at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh, was charged Wednesday with dozens of criminal counts, including federal hate crimes which could result in a death penalty. Now, I was just wondering, yeah, when was the last time we did guns on this show? The last time well, we, we had, had a massacre? A, uh, uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. we do it every time there's a shooting, pretty much. He had an AR-15 and a couple of handguns. And he really held down police. He shot four of them. Yeah, he He sure didn't did. kill one, but yeah. he, he, he shot them, and they... It was pretty... Well, the police by now are, are wearing body gear, so their extremities are exposed, but basically the trunk of their body uh, is presumably uh, covered. None of the cops think, was hit really bad. But I don't think that would uh, stop an AR-15 round, boss. Uh, a standard a standard. Well, I thought, I thought it would have... Not. I thought it's based on the bullets. They would have to be armor-piercing bullets. It doesn't no, matter no, on no. the gun. Yeah, armor-piercing pierces armor as in like a vehicle's armor, like a metal. That's okay. when you think about armor piercing. Uh, to pierce Kevlar, unless, unless they have some sort of trauma plate, like right. a clay plate, correct? Right. Uh, it's going to pierce, Ke- uh, an AR will pierce Kevlar, no problem. Okay. Um, uh, what you're thinking about most likely is handguns, small handguns, and perhaps shotguns, things that don't necessarily have such a high uh, speed of uh, projectile velocity. Uh, I think that's what you're referring to. Well, I'm I'm going to defer to you because when it comes to guns, I'm pretty much as ignorant. Uh, I'm pretty ignorant, and I, I will defer to you. 
I, I watch a few engineering shows. I've been shooting a few times, but uh, you know, and I took my classes. That's for sure. I've been my safety. You've classes. watched a few engineering shows. Well, engineering uh, shows talk about bullets and whether or not they they pierce uh, the, cavalier. Oh, and as, as it relates to velocity and mass and so forth, they have, it more than likely probably does the science of it. Yeah, and the, you guys watch History Channel, right? They talk about that I stuff love all History the time. Channel. Yeah, the evolution <laughs> of the bullet and the evolution of the firearm and how it's uh, evolved uh, from, what, a single barrel uh, ball that you would shove down there type of thing to like a revolver. You got yeah. to load it like a musket. And all yeah, that I was going to say it's right. like a musket. Yeah, but regarding uh, the AR-15 and body armor, so the police who come there during uh, an active shooter situation who arrive on scene first, I think they now have protocols where they're supposed to uh, pretty much risk their life uh, in order to stop the active shooter. Uh, I also saw the... They're very aggressive now. Yeah, well, we live in a new time. As opposed to Columbine, where... Well, or, I think yeah, that was a, kind of the start of this, right? Yeah, that, they didn't know what they were doing. Yeah, And I think that one well, Florida police park, officer... Right, yes, exactly. Who, who, like, took up a perimeter for some reason. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yes. Trump called him a coward, uh, but it's a tough tough situation to be in, no no doubt. So I don't know. Uh, They're if undoubtedly that, a lot more well trained now. Well, if, they, if that's what you're hired to do to protect somebody, then you got to go in I, I, rather than to let the carnage continue. Got to be ready to rock and roll. But 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 on the other hand, just to, for argument's sake, and that's what we do here. Uh, if you're, for example, in this Parkland shooting, and and there's a large open space like this outdoor field or whatever where people are flaying out, and you know this perpetrator is shooting at people. Uh, a handgun walking up in such a situation will be no match for a rifle. First of all, you have to get extremely close, mm-hmm. uh, and, and in an open area, it's over. It really is. Even a, uh, an amateur shooter will be able to take down a person who's got a handgun. Uh, I mean, how accurate is a handgun? I don't know if you guys go shooting, but if 30 yards, 40 yards? Well, you yard? can take down anybody with a handgun if you're a good, good enough shot. You're talking well, about think- sh- shooting them in the head like, yeah. uh, like a movie? Yeah. From like 30, 40 yards? That is a well, tough no, shot. Well, maybe not that far, but it's the same thing if you have a rifle. I mean, if you lack the expertise in, right. in gun handling, it's, it's going to be the same thing. I've seen that. A uh, rifle, presumably, you have a much longer, I mean, you have a much farther range, right? And the accuracy, the, the kick of the weapon. It still takes a lot of skill to fire right. it accurately. We, we could assume the person who's showing up to use it probably isn't scared to do so. Uh, or is good at it. Well, yeah. They probably shot it at least one time before in practice. Uh, so these active shooter situations are, are new uh, as far as since Columbine. The, since the, the Columbine, policy, yeah. uh, But the policy of the police has evolved. Yes. Uh, you know, the protocols. It's yeah. been uh, more aggressive each time. Uh, to and the they po- actively train to go after them. Yes, they do. I don't know Which how many cops. what didn't happen in Columbine. How many cops really sign up for such an aggressive uh, action? I understand they get paid really well. Well, the police officers who show up for like SWAT, yeah, that's what they're there yeah. for. Yeah. But as a routine patrol officer, as a student resource officer, that is a very tough uh, protocol to have to follow. Yeah, but you still have to be ready to do your base, the basic function of your job and not make it worse, you know. That's what I think about that guy. Well, everyone wants to think that they'd be brave and that they would surrender their life. That's true. And I, I'm just happy that I won't have to hopefully not make such a decision, yeah. and then I could pretend to be brave. But mm, I, I don't hesitate. know. I wouldn't hesitate. Well, we we no. have we have a couple of baseball bats in our office, and I would have no hesitation whatsoever <laughs> about swinging the baseball bat. We'll take which, them downtown. Yeah, <laughs> which is the reason why I purposely don't have a gun in my office i have never in my life pointed a gun at another person and i wouldn't want the first time to be when someone is in my office threatening me because i don't know if i would hold it right i don't know if Mm -hmm. i would my hand would shake but i know for a fact that i would take that aluminum baseball bat and forget it lights out you know one contact forget it you're done <laughs> okay so that so anybody who's out there listening thinking they're going to take anybody, on Steve in his yeah. home court you're not going to attack yeah. him in his own yeah. home anybody who's listening if you and again we we don't have a cash business of course you want to come into my office with a gun you take anything you want but if you don't bring that gun you're going to need the ambulance we right have three away stri- yeah. strategically placed a baseball bat. well you know what they say you're not supposed to pull your gun unless you're meaning to use it so uh, just like a condom so, 
Well, okay. Well, I don't know <laughs> well, about that. Uh, that's a personal that was, decision. Well, when was the last time further. you took one out that you that didn't a, intend to uh, use? That was a segue. <laughs> You don't have to answer that, Robert. I'll answer it for you. It's the same It's the same principle. You don't take it out unless you plan on using it. What if it's been in your wallet for a really long time? Uh, well, then you should throw it away. Don't it's take like it high out. School, you right? have a backup. Right. It's like eighth grade. So you're never going to use this thing, but you carried it for like three years. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's embarrassing. I think I'd better read the next news story. Um, Alphabet Inc., Waymo's uh, unit on Tuesday became the first company to resolve a permit uh, to receive a permit from the state of California to test driverless vehicles without a backup driver in the front seat the state's department of motor vehicles said Waymo may use about 3 dozen test vehicles without drivers behind the wheel in Santa Clara County part of the greater technology hub of Silicon Valley. So if you're up in Santa Clara, up in the Silicon Valley, and you see a car go by without anybody in it, you know what's going on. Are, are these going to actually be allowed to be tested on city streets? Has anybody? Yeah, heard? that's the whole point. See, up up until now, uh, they allowed the cars to drive by themselves in California, but there had to be someone in the car. Right now, they're not. <clears throat> On city streets in Santa Clara County. Santa Clara right? County in Silicon Valley, baby. That's pretty cool. I, I kind of want to go check that out. From Hopefully not get hit by a car. And I, I'd have to watch from a tree. I was <laughs> going to say, I, I'm going to watch from my I'm computer. I'd stay on the, the sidewalk, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to be on no, the sidewalk, no, no, How no, did, no. Like if you want to cross at a stop sign, right? How, how you? I mean, wouldn't you be a little dubious? You'd be looking at this car like... Is this the day that you hit me? Right? Because you have no one around. It's just you and this vehicle. No one to believe you. You know, I'm I'm hearing people when when talking about driverless cars. I'm I'm hearing the uh, the narrative. Well, you know, if if we would have stopped trying to build planes. Uh, when just one or two people died, we would never be flying. However, that's not the same thing. We're talking about driverless cars here. We're not talking about cars. And I still think we're many, many, many years away from driverless cars safely on the road. Which, well, one what, assumes they've had a lot of their safety issues ironed out for the DMV to give them permission to do this, uh, or somebody at the DMV is an idiot. Plus, boss, I think... Oh, and that would surprise you. <laughs> that that would surprise you. Okay. Well, they, and they must okay. have at least been a, awake to give the permit. That's good. Uh, so, <laughs> so, a, so we got one there. Was, uh, someone's on. Someone's working. That's good. Uh, now, uh, uh, rather than off. getting paid for being uh, uh, for sleeping. You know, off. for technology, boss, I think... The growth, as far as you know, uh, the percentage of gain uh, in the technology sector, uh, as far as knowledge accumulates, has been exponential, right? So maybe we'll be quicker to the uh, driverless cars being safer than than you believe. Maybe, uh, yeah, maybe, because uh, you're saying a number of years, but I am. When you saw the the internet roll out, and you were part of that generation, uh, and you see it today, right? This the growth has been night and day well the internet first came out in the 1960s it didn't it didn't start to get in home computing until the late 80s early 90s well that's when the home computer started that's when the home computer started shortly thereafter we started with email and the internet Mm -hmm. and you saw that whole revolution occur absolutely I. and now in my in my hand i have the iphone uh seven or whatever it is well i have the seven and we have the pretty much the information of the universe available to as far as all man available at our hands at any one time. We basically right. have all the information in the universe in our well, hands. Well, not the universe. All, well, as far as mankind did. knows. As we far have as the, mankind knows. Do right? we have the Fabrini? <laughs> We can, we can communicate with each other instantly now. Right, we but, can see each other. But I think the caveat and the best point you make is it's in our hands. Wow. We're, we're physically touching it. You know, jobless cars, we're not touching it. We're, we're, we're placing our faith and our safety in an autonomous vehicle 
with with no manual human oversight other than from a remote location somewhere. Well, we're going to need this in the future, right? This is going to be inevitable Why? because if we want to, well, no, 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 humanity no, no. has I, to I go beyond I the don't earth, agree doesn't it? That we need no. this. No, I, don't agree with I think that. we do. I think humanity's existence is in the stars, right? We have to move out to the. What does it have to do with driverless cars? Well, they're not artificial flying. intelligence and robotics oh, is see. the only I way see. that we can considerably. Uh, it have our reach as humans uh, go that that far? No, no physical creature, as far as like human, like a flesh and blood, can travel that far. But we can send a probe with all of our information and do our backing, and, you know, to do our wills. That that can happen, and that's likely. We do they that just, now. Well, to a certain extent, but this is going to be the future. Is they're going to take care of us? They're going to feed us. They'll provide you the clothes. That's in the an morning. optimistic view. This well, it's kind of being like the Jetsons a little bit, right? Your boy Elroy. Um, <laughs> well, I was going to say Total Recall and Johnny Car, but go ahead. But so, for example, I you know I like the astronomy news and stuff like that. I read those articles mm-hmm. just for interest's sake. So we are going to send a uh, man to w- Mars in about five years. Well, I'd say ten. But see, that's the issue: is that human exploration can only reach a certain extent, right? Well, I mean, we have to have a big ship, and then we have to travel on it, and the distances are just unimaginable at our current rate of moving in our a, propulsion in, systems. In addition to well, uh, well, having a having an artificial gravity in space because without an artificial gravity yeah, man there's a lot of hurdles won't survive that's Correct. right there's yeah. tons of hurdles for man to be out in space mm, uh, not necessarily because you have to remember you know when you talk about human travel um, space uh, travel yeah space yeah. travel yeah space travel you're, you're talking about in order to accomplish that you move at the speed of light as you approach the speed of light time slows down so in that sense the person that would be taking that trip would likely not age as much as the people here on Earth. For sure. So I think the biggest quandary we would have to solve would be as far as sustenance is concerned. And that might be accomplished through uh, suspended animation, so to speak, so our body isn't deprived Which right now is not possible. Okay, and, and it can because there's already technology where the human heart can be slowed down to one beat per minute and you still survive. Well, you really? could re- you could replace yes. the whole heart now with the machine. Yes, you can. And you will and it's freaky and you just won't have a pulse. But you're alive. Uh, it's a artificial heart now. So but as far as suspended animation, this stuff is possible, I guess in theory, but currently our best hope for reaching the stars is to send a machine. That's true. Uh, to, uh, and even in all the movies we watch, the heaven is here on earth, right? Uh we don't want to be out in the cold environment of space. You know, there's a we reason. We don't have the technology to reach another star. The M5 well, unit. Well, another star involves uh, another solar system, right? Because we that we have one star in our solar system. So we are currently locked to our neighborhood, our solar system. Uh, we're not even talking about going uh, within the Milky Way galaxy. That's just one galaxy. No, right? no, no. Well, there's two. There's so two. There's two hundred. We're kings of the solar system. Bi- there's two hundred billion stars in the galaxy. I'm talking about going to the the very nearest star. Is it Alpha Centauri? I yeah. believe it is. Which is, mm-hmm. which is two and a half to three light years away, right. which basically means <laughs> traveling at the speed of light, which right now is impossible, according to Einstein. That's 186,000 miles per second, per second right. for two and a half to three years. That is not possible. And right now, none of that is possible. As far as what is possible and what we can kind of have goals that are are reachable, there are asteroids fairly close to us, maybe four or five times away uh, from the moon, uh, that type of distance. And those asteroids could be uh, containing some fairly precious metals. Or comets. Well, Potentially, I, but those uh, those floating asteroids could be a lot of iron or perhaps gold or titanium. We don't know, right? And I think James Cameron actually came out with this, talking about how he wants to mine one of these asteroids and be the first yeah, trillionaire. A long time ago, yeah. but even but even speaking to what Steve was talking about, as far as being able to travel that distance, if if you really look into Einstein's theory of relativity, he using his formulas, there were a lot of possibilities that were posed and now i'm talking about wormholes where you can travel across a galaxy in a matter of minutes space time can be bent yes right actually if i'm not mistaken it's bending light but go ahead correct so so that it's so that that's a possibility that we could explore 
But also, Einstein's theory concretely said you cannot travel faster than the speed of light. Right. No, we're you just can't. talking about no. approaching the speed. But we're talking the about, but we're okay. talking about okay. covering a distance. Yeah. You know, by like I said, by usage, by virtue of a wormhole. Okay. But the tricky thing about yes. that is, you might travel through that wormhole, but you cannot dictate or anticipate where you would end up at. That's mm-hmm. where the challenge comes in at. Because because of the instability of wormholes, you could think you're headed in one direction, and by the time you get to the end, it has shifted someplace else. So the wormhole is just like you know going in a different door. Correct. It's not really a matter of speed, because you're bending it. Correct. Well, if you look at the movie Contact with Jodie Foster, she goes through a wormhole. I, I truly hope that I'm alive to see some sort of breakthrough. Uh, well, you will be. How old are you? 33. You will be. I'd love to see... Uh, you know, intelligent life for uh, on another planet or something of that nature. Um, that would be, uh, you know, something to behold. I would be happy just to see microbial life on another planet. Well, that's what I've been watching a lot of documentaries on that exactly that issue when chemistry and physics turns into biology. How, did, how did life become? Right. Right. Mm-hmm. After you have any form of life, you will therefore later through evolution have intelligent life. One right. organism will eat the other. And they will adapt until the king, uh, you know, keeps eating the smaller uh, person. Uh, and that's what how I, you get eyes and ears and teeth, right? You guys adapt adaptations. What are these shows? What have they said about Mars? Uh, well, then that's what I seem to recall. I recall when when Steve mentioned about micro, micro, microbial organisms that they did find some evidence of microbial organisms on Mars and water. So yes. it makes sense. Well, yeah, there, there's been water confirmed both on the moon and on Mars. We also have it on Saturn's and Jupiter's moons. But, and there was also some indication that on Venus and Mercury, even in spite of the methane gas atmosphere, that there was some micro, microbial life that could exist at those temperatures as well. Wow. Unbelievable. My name is Steve Appel. You're listening to Work Comp Matters. We're brought to you by A1 Law Santa Monica Tickets. And, of course, ABC Rugs, if you want the number one computer management system used by more workers' compensation attorneys than any other system in the damn Kuiper Belt, give me a call at 818-357-4120 for your no-strings-attached money-back guarantee, $1 a day, A1 Law. And if you want those hard-to-get, sold-out, even front-row concert, sports, and theater tickets, give our buddy Brian a call at Santa Monica Tickets, 310-395-8587. And we're not going to play it, Scott, but we're also brought to you by ABC Rugs. Uh, we've talked about uh, one ongoing show tonight and then spent about 15 or 20 minutes uh, talking about the future and about intelligent life and artificial life and self-driving cars. What can I tell you? We will be back to talk about whatever everybody wants to talk about after Glenn Lachlan and the Cherry Blue Storms. How does it feel to be one of the beautiful people? Now that you know who you are, what do you want to be? And have you traveled very far? Far as the eye can see. Baby, you're a rich man. Baby, you're a rich man too. You keep all your money in a good brown bag. Decide to do what a thing to do. How does it feel to be one of the beautiful people? How often have you been there? Often enough to know. What did you see when you were there? Nothing that doesn't show. Baby, you're a rich man. Baby, you're a rich man too. You keep all your money in a big brown bag. Inside a zoo, what a thing to do. Naturally 
say it orbits like this while we all orbit like that. Mm. It orbits like this while we all orbit like that. So zigs while we zag. It zigs while we zag. We were talking off the off the mic off uh, you know the supposed the break, planet the break, a, planet, planet X. X right. Nubiru. Nobody talks about Pluto, the lost stepchild anymore. Now it's right. all about Planet X. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, we were just talking about the ancient. I guess you can call that kind of like an ancient alien theory, isn't that? Isn't that the same type of thing where a lot of people believe that's where the aliens are from? This a missing planet in our solar system. No, please. All these conspiracies no. kind of run together, no. but there there is a little bit of uh, you know something to be said about the fact that perhaps there was a missing planet in our solar system, uh, uh, some sort of gravitational force that is uh, exerting its. Uh, Did you say uh, they call it Planet X? Planet X, right? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people who call it Nibiru. I think there was How a do movie. How you spell that? Nibiru. Yeah. Oh man, you know, <laughs> it's N I B. It's a uh, Man, somebody smarter than me can, can spell that one. No, I can't. I've never even heard of that. I have I heard either. of Planet I've, I've heard X. of Planet X, but yeah. not what you're talking about. No. Who, uh, I personally believe that before the Earth had life, I believe that Mars had life. I believe Mars had an atmosphere. I believe Mars had life, and for whatever reason, it's no longer there. Because if you take a look at Mars right now, uh, you look at the planet, and it has like the the indentation in the planet of rivers and mm-hmm. lakes and oceans. Yes. Clearly, right. water was flowing through it it to geology. carve that. It has right. geology. And, of course, there, there's no, um, I don't want to say there's no History water on it, but uh, clearly, the majority, clearly the majority of the water that was once on the planet is no longer there. Correct. Do you think that there was intelligent life on Mars? Uh, I know one thing for certain. For there to be any type of life, there has to be water. And that's why uh, the scientists and the astrophysicists, they're always looking for the existence of water. Because without water, there is no life. But Life as we know it. But let me ask you this, there's no, there, There's no water. There's no life without water, period, as far as I am concerned. Well, there could be extremophiles, and there probably are. Sometimes. Well, I've never heard of an extremophile. <laughs> No, you, be- in harsh you believe in evolution well, and all of that, right? Uh, of course I do. But yeah. you would still have to say that at a minimum there is a question of how something came from nothing, correct? How biology started. I mean, you look at all the other planets and you have chemistry and physics working Big in bang. interaction. Big bang, baby. Okay, but how about life? Life started. Biology, not physics and chemistry. Biology. How did biology begin, right? You have a bunch of chemicals and you have... Presumably gravity exerting its force on these chemicals in space and it's, you know, bringing some together, creating the planets, right? Uh, and the, chem- you know, the f- different elements are whatever mixing. And then on one of these rocks, these things combine to create biology. Earth? Somehow. Yes, it's, it's a possibility. Because well, of the definitely. Fact- we have biology, but no one else does. No other planet contains biology as well, far as but, we know. Okay, but yeah, again. The as microbes as far, maybe. Yeah, as far as you know, because you have to understand, it's kind of what Steve took touched on you have to look and and i've never been a believer that the earth is the only planet in the entire galaxy or universe that has any form of life intelligent life as it were that that's extremely myopic narrow-minded in my opinion It, it simply is because the possibilities of life existing on the planets is is too exponential because if you look at 200 million galaxies you're going to say out of all of those yeah. that has an infinite number of planets that Earth is the only one we that can support We shouldn't even worry life. about other galaxies. We should wonder if we're the king of our galaxy. Right. Even, right? even like what Steve was saying as far as there has to be water. I don't think there has to be water. I think there needs to be a fluid of some sort. I think there needs to be a liquid of some sort. Sometimes with the right temperature then because, to, yes, to maintain because, those. Because, because life can exist at almost any temperature. There has been evidence of bacteria in the frozen Arctic at minus 600 degrees below zero that they have found evidence of, of life. So it is a distinct possibility. I think there just has to be a liquid of some sort, like I was saying on on Venus and Mercury, an atmosphere of methane gas. There's evidence that there is microbial life there. So life can exist in some form at extreme temperatures, be they hot or be they cold. Generally, it's agreed upon, and I believe this, that firstly, for a solar system, you have to be in the sweet spot. Now, you figure that if you have life on Earth, you have life in our solar system, 
life will somewhat be similar in other solar systems and other galaxies. So the sweet spot yeah. is generally considered about 60 to 120 uh, million miles from well, the star. Which no, not, bo- no, not necessarily, boss. It's the size of the star relative to the distance. Okay, if it's a huge star and you're that close, and the mass you're of the burnt, planet, correct, like, like the well, gravitational like force giant. of it. Ridge you have to be in the Goldilocks zone. It's a, it's a oh, number uh, the, of factors. The go- thank you. The Goldilocks zone. It's going to be yes, the gravitational pull right. of the sun. You have to have other planets behind you to take the comets, uh, be your bodyguard. I think that's our Jupiter uh, Ju- and Saturn Ju- Ju- for us, right? Actually, it's, it's Jupiter is our bodyguard. Jupiter is yes, our bodyguard, correct. right? It helps us out from all those big comet strikes. That's it just took exact, a huge one, didn't it, me- last year? Meteor, yes. Wasn't there a, a Jupiter strike last year and that it got, was an enormous we got, strike? We got it on film. I think it was two or three years ago, but I was... I was attempting to agree with Ted that when you deal with 200 stars in our Milky Way, uh, pardon me, 200 (coughs) billion stars in our Milky Way galaxy, and then you have 200 billion galaxies supposedly in the universe, there should be life somewhere else. Correct. Correct. But even if there was... You mean wasn't or was? Even if there is is, or or was... yes. Or will be. Yes. Space time is such that even if they were to rise and fall, we might never know. Well, of course. Right? Of right. course. So hopefully they would leave, like we would, some sort of electronic presence beyond their physical bodies. Right? Something that lasts in space. Perhaps a radio wave. Right? Radio is fantastic in the sense that it can travel interplanetary distances immediate. No, not immediate, but very quickly. And they examine that in contact, but it's just a movie. Please continue. Well, that's what well, we're well, doing that's, nowadays. That's, that's where the quasars and the neutrinos come from that we're bombarded with all the time. And they're trying to interpret those in the sense as radio waves to see, to see if they can track their destination and see if they were purposely sent in our direction. But first, even if uh, there was an intelligent, another life form, let's say broadcasting, like we are broadcasting out mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and we can talk about whether or not it's wise to broadcast out uh, generally. Why uh, wouldn't it be wise? But go ahead. Well, I don't know who's going to hear this message. What are their intentions? And what harm does it do? Usually if somebody calls first, they have good intentions. If yeah. they just show up at your door, not so good. Uh, okay. And I think it would work the same in space. If we were to have a uh, contact with another uh, species, hopefully they would send us some sort of message saying, Hey, we're friendly. You know, send us an email first before you meet us, <laughs> right? You uh, said, did you say Vulcan, before you eat us? What? Before you meet us or oh, eat us. us. I'm oh, hoping, okay. yeah. Vulcans rather than Klingons. <laughs> Correct. You know, it's the, hopefully it's the Vulcans, not the Klingons. <laughs> Klingons just show up. The Vulcans will send you a message. They're very appropriate, those Vulcans. Uh, so we have a lot to, to kind of think about as far as even what frequency this radio wave can be on. Right there, I, I know people want to broadcast at the frequency that hydrogen vibrates at because that's the element that's the most abundant that's in the, the universe. That's the most common, yeah, most common uh, element. That's right. But you know, we have had no luck so far. Uh, I think, as far as you know, we took this from driverless cars to driverless mm-hmm. spaceships, pretty much, mm-hmm. right? Uh, but it's the same technology that we're going to be extrapolating here. So that's why it's so important that we're at the cutting edge, right? So when we get in these vehicles to take us places, we're not just trying to go down the street. Even though we are, what we're really doing is we're, we're building the future. I got to think there's some really significant brain matter working on this. Probably about three to 4,000 really smart PhD type humanoids that are working on this. And they'll probably get all the bugs worked out in like two and a half years. I think capitalism is great. I was going to say clearly there's the opportunity to make a heck of a lot of money. And Same that's thing with why. space exploration. Look at Elon Musk with SpaceX, right? I, when I first saw that rocket uh, shell land itself. Land itself. Well, you guys were in awe, right? I mean, yes. I was un, it was yes. unbelievable. That he, he, this he, does not real. That's got to be just on like a computer graphic. He appears to have fallen off the rails or gone off the rails somehow. No, nah, Tesla stock just reported great earnings. Oh, it, it did. Yeah, no, yeah, it really did. Yeah. He, he, yeah, popped, he popped, popped a few bottles after that. that one, yeah. Right. Because they were talking a lot about Elon Musk being an unstable character, and here it is, bottom line, good earnings, not potential, which is what Elon Musk always got by on, you know, because he he's the great genius. Has he good earnings reports before? Not for Tesla, no. No. Tesla uh, was a... A money loser, generally. I don't know if I was going to say it was turning a profit or not. It, it, I'm not sure. Where, where, no, where did his Where did his thirty five thousand dollar cars go? And I heard they're just stocked up somewhere, going nowhere. 
Really? Well, I, yeah, I, no, I haven't. A, I heard just the opposite. I heard that they're selling them faster than they can make them. Really? Right. Really? Yeah. That there, right. there's a two year waiting list right now. Mm-hmm. Really? Yes. And like a Lamborghini. And, and that was and that was one of the reasons why he he shows such a profit is because people are putting the deposits down for these cars. Yeah, yeah. That was a, a very positive statement that you know in right. the future. Uh, it looks like he's a really the cutting edge as far as the vehicles. I Absolutely. know Ford and Toyota. They're all trying to catch up with him now, but. We've had, we've discussed the electric car a lot in the past, and we'll see if well, this time it's going to stick. No, we've long discussed term. we've discussed driverless cars in the past. Well, we don't discuss too much electric. Cars. Maybe not electric cars here on this show, oh, but okay. the electric cars had its due or had its argument in its favor previously, and it didn't win that argument. Maybe because of the oil companies. Well, uh, I would say it's deck. because of the de- the design of the car. Eli Musk has designed the car so people want to buy it. I mean, if you look. At electric cars before Elon Musk, they basically look like crap. Yeah, the Prius and then the Leaf. Gosh, I, I, but but yeah, Elon Prius Musk drivers. Is. If you're Elon. listening, Prius drivers, please what? <laughs> Elon, stop, stop Elon, whatever you're doing. Elon, <laughs> Elon Musk came along and he made the Tesla a beautiful, sexy machine. Absolutely. And I tell you, he's going to start getting some competition because the friends and I got together a couple of months ago. Oh, yeah, and oh. we just going online. Mazda has made this electric car. That is just outstanding. Well, Mercedes oh and BMW God. are both making uh, oh, right, yeah. electric cars, yeah. too. Do you guys yeah. trust the full electric vehicle still? Well, I don't drive it, but I, I trust drive. it. Why not? What's I not to trust? It. Is it going to catch fire or what? Well, it could run out on the battery and you're in the middle of the highway. Oh, Well, you could do that with gas. You, there, there, there's got to be a gauge that's going to tell you how much distance you have to go. As a matter of fact, I think that's one of the things, one of the one of the designs in the Tesla, because I have a couple of friends that own them, is that if you're driving by and if there's any, a place for it to recharge, one is mapped out in the car and automatically starts taking you there. You don't even steer there. It no takes you there. Kidding. Yes, it wow. takes you to a charging station. If you're passing one, no, it's going to take you there. I, I do feel bad that we spend all this money, uh, you know, sending it to the Middle East to the to people who do not nice things with the money we we exchange for oil. So you're talking about the Saudis? Well, yeah, Saudis. Just you pick, a, you just throw a dart in the Middle East, okay? You, they got oil, and we probably don't approve of what they're doing, okay? That's just that's most likely how it is. So if we can stop sending our money there, I'm sure morally we'd feel a little bit better in the morning. Uh, and maybe our country will be economically healthier too. Uh, I don't know uh, about those implications just yet. I know that Trump has been trying to uh, decrease regulations to well, increase energy production. Well, is the country production, unhealthy right now economically? No, we're well. We've I had ups and downs in the market, good. but yeah, we're pretty good right now. But as far as don't you think we'd be doing even better if we didn't send ha- like all of our money to the Middle East oh, for, for sure. oil? Absolutely. If we kept it in the house here. My 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 concern, as I've expressed here many times before, is the polarization of the citizenship and the individuals. I think that um, a lot of people are taking liberties now, um, interfering with other people's rights, specifically with guns and ammunition, uh, shooting up places of worship, uh, shooting at people just because they're having a bad day. And there's no solution to stop that right now. And that's what bothers me. Hey, Boz, you know what? This is interesting. Going back to space for a second. Mm-hmm. You're in space. You're on a spaceship. You want your gun on you? <laughs> no. For sure you do. Oh, really? Yes. There's oh, yeah. no law out there. Oh, you are your own law. It's like the Wild West. Correct. A, a Mike gun, understands. You need to space. have your firearm on your side. Yeah, but God forbid a straight bullet or something well, happens. Well, probably some sort of laser or something mm-hmm. in the future. You know, but you're going to have your sidearm, right? Especially your phaser. Your phaser, your laser. You could set it to stun if you're worried about being lethal, boss, okay? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I don't think firearms are allowed in space right now. Sorry. Yeah. I, well, I, would, I wouldn't want It will one. be militarized. You bet. It's, it already is militarized to my, some extent. Yeah, space is the first thing that's going to be. That's is, why we're doing the Space Force. Correct. And now we find these comets, that, or not comets, I should say asteroids, floating within reach, uh, within technological reach, that is. We and landed, a, 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 we landed probe. a probe on one. Yeah. It's extraordinary. But a I don't comet. know if necessarily that was made up of anything other than a hunk of rock. Uh, they didn't say it anything, was just rock, at least. Yeah. yeah. But I'm waiting for one of these things to be titanium. All right? You got a... a, a hunk of titanium the size of Texas floating around. If you can just h- land something on it, control its orbit, and just slowly mine it, 
and somehow return the cargo to Earth in I'm a profitable fashion. I'm waiting for dilithium crystals myself. <laughs> wow. That would be cool, but I don't know if that actually exists. Oh, okay. <laughs> but titanium we know exists, and we know that it's a you know, fairly a rare metal. But space will be militarized a lot in about five years, and we got to get there first. Sorry. You, think just gonna, you really think it's going to be that soon? I don't know if it'd be that I think soon. to a certain extent, depending on what Ruskies have done and what we have done in response, there might be a lot of covert militarism in space already. Mm. Yeah, you might be right. There might be a I, lot I, I of covert think, military. See, see, the only thing I can see as far as the militarization of space would be the first one that establishes some sort of base on the moon. Why haven't it's, we done it's, that? It's, it's like anything. Because of the fact that right now, I think the last study was done about 25 years ago, it's just too expensive. It costs too much money. So why, you know? why do you need the base on the moon when you have the, uh, the space station? No, well, because you, you need to have a, a home place, a bigger place of operation. Yeah. Because if you if you have a if you a have a, if you have a base on the moon, you would be able to have more troops there. You know, yeah. you, you can set up more more firepower on the moon. Space station's like a se. hub, really. The, the right. only the only advantage I mm-hmm. could see to having a hub or whatnot, a station on the moon, is if you were to develop an artificial atmosphere. And right. then you could go for it. Right. Well, yeah. And, and, that, and that's when, and that's where the cost factor comes into it, creating the artificial gravity. And again, trying to, to feed and well, gravity well, and gravity. atmosphere. Well, yes. artificial gravity, too. You have to have that. Yeah. Otherwise, you got people floating all over the place. Right. It's, exactly. part, it's part and parcel. Right. Not on the moon. Not on the moon won't be possible, but on a ship. It, it Why isn't it possible? Why isn't it possible on the moon? Of course it is. If you have if you have an enclosure, I'm okay. Talking, if you have an enclosure, I'm talking, yeah. I'm talking about an enclosure. Usually on a spaceship, the way it's done in the movies is, I think it's uh, not the centripetal force; it's the one that doesn't actually exist on Earth. Centrifugal force is that the the one that's the mystery force? It doesn't actually exist no on idea. Earth. You know what I'm talking it ex- about? It exists on Earth. I, I thought it was that's difficult to recreate. I don't uh, think so. No. One of them pushes things out, but one pushes, th- drags well, things in. Well, the centripetal, well, the centripetal force, force is the one that pushes, pushes out. Pushes out. Yeah. Yeah, That's and why centrifugal force pushes something in, right? So I think that's the one that is in th- uh, theory only or something, uh, last I checked. Um, and it's been a while, trust me. So someone's listening to this thinking I'm butchering it. But that may be the, the key of some sort of rotation to get a... Uh, gravity on a spaceship but i've seen also in the movies where they do mag boots have you seen those of course yeah. where they yeah, have they the mag boots too. magnetic boots right. of yeah, course yeah. sure Mag- magnetic right. boots and there's rails that you walk on and there's no up or down there's just kind of a, a pattern on every side mm. to let you know where you walk here walk there so you can walk by somebody and you're yeah. upside down on their upside you know yeah strange huh but uh <laughs> you can to get think about sick you get seasick in something like that big time yeah, you're, uh, you would probably have a, a quick Well, half of the people who go out to space get sick. Yeah, yeah, throwing up. Yeah. So that's why I think heaven's here on Earth. But I do think that uh, robotics, driverless vehicles, uh, this is the future. And we need to embrace it, maybe not uh, blindly, right? Like, like you perhaps uh, are hesitant to do, getting into this vehicle and saying, all right, drive me we off a cliff, be, you know what need, I mean? We need to be careful of it. We need to manage it. It should not be managing us. Well, I, we always I manage agree it. I 100% on if that one. If one thing has proven time and time again throughout history, it's that technology goes faster than our ability to be wise to use it. Correct. Always. So that's why we need to stick to those stick to our guns you you uh, you need to take it slowly for the pun. guns in space for sure you bet for sure you bet sorry i wonder how many people listening to this are thinking well if i was on a spaceship i wouldn't want any guns around i'm not talking about an yeah. airplane with a firearm and no, then you shoot the window and that's depressurizes the cabin right we're not talking about something why reckless. the hell do you need a gun in space yeah, and, 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 because and, and, your enemy and, will have one no and, and it's kind of funny enemy. because one of one of one of, one of my favorite no law, and i i consider uh Quasi classic and maybe a class B movie classic is Armageddon. Of okay, course, yeah. I Willis. know it yeah. back and forth. Yeah, okay, sure. and remember when they're, when they're getting <laughs> ready to what talk are about you defusing doing with a gun in space? Exactly, exactly. Okay, and remember when the guy got crazy and started going outside and he's shooting the gun all over yeah. the place? Yeah, 
you know, space dementia? No. Absolutely. No. Horrible idea. Horrible. Well, okay. Anytime Horrible. someone loses it in space and they have a gun, obviously it's a bad idea to, to have mm-hmm. anything, a gun, a knife, a, a stick, a rock. But uh, I think uh, me and Mike are seeing this the same is there's no law out there. It's the Wild West. So you're your own law. And if the other person's respectful, they have no reason to fear you and vice versa, right? Just like the Wild West uh, or Texas. It depends where you are right now. Do you right mean now. in the same ship or in different ships? Oh, well, you're, let's say that you're docking one ship to the other. You're meeting up at uh, Europa Station, right? All the way out there uh, near the Cowboys, Kuiper or whatever. Space right? Cowboys. Yeah, space and then Cowboys. You're, you're, you're walking around. You got your sidearm on your hip. Oh, my God. Right? Hey, how are you guys doing? If, from- damn if you're walking around and you get hit with a grain of sand, you are dead. We're not talking about floating in space and getting hit by a hyperspeed object or something that, that totally like penetrates you. Well, you're talking you. about guns and bullets. I'm talking about a grain of sand. Well, we're talking about like an enclosure. Like what Ted was saying, you got the space station. Maybe you're on a different planet now. Right, you land there. Okay. I'm assuming they're going to have some sort of authority. First of all, right? They would have a policing system. But let's say you're a you just said a long haul truck just, driver. You just said there are no laws in space. You're no, let's law. say you're you're a long haul trucker, right? Yeah. So to speak, uh, uh the car- What are they called? They're transports. Yeah, going out yeah. to Europa is a pretty damn yeah. long haul. Well, I'm sure there's going to be uh interst- pirates, in- inner solar s- transports. Correct. There's going to be pirates. pirates. Uh, you know, you're going to have something from Earth delivered to the moon. Uh, delivered to uh, a moon uh, off of uh, Saturn or Jupiter where people are staying, presumably, right? And you're going to have to have these goods delivered there. You're gonna Protected. Have, yeah. You're going to have long-haul truckers, right? Same thing. People who have these huge ships and, you know, roll. It's just like in the movies. Well, this is this from the movies. It's not real yet. Yet. Uh, but I think this is what we're talking about. The reason we have such a fascination with it and such a curiosity, why we're building these smaller machines with that that really we see the purpose of them we're going to space with rockets that are landing we're having driverless vehicles it doesn't take two to see what we're doing here as humanity right we're, we're combining this all computers listen, listen, artificial listen, intelligence listen to you makes me think we ain't got no business in space out there with guns <laughs> uh, okay, oh, all, all, all we do let's, is make a make a mess of, of space like we did here on earth let's no. let's yeah, teach th- your kids you. computer coding everybody let's try let's try this do you think the first humanoids that are on mars will come back to the earth or will they live and die on mars i think they have to come back to send the message that it's okay if they don't come back as a policy it's a dangerous they presumption com- they can communicate though you, right. they, yeah can, they but don't they have will, to come back but then most of the people say yeah they're never coming back <laughs> the, the first explorers will come back probably the first 10 missions or so they they, they should I, I, what I to would, report what they find or what the conditions are, I yeah, presume. Just to show you, seeing is believing. Right? Otherwise, if you just but send me an image. they can do that without them coming back. Oh, uh, green screen. Everyone will start complaining. I don't know what the right? hell green screen is, but I know this. Green screen is where you could pretend to be anywhere, right? The right, back of you is the backdrop is green screen. Oh, the old conspiracy theory that we right. didn't land on the moon. Well, it's different because you're alive on Mars for now. Let's see if you get your, you know, your butt back here, right? That's always the test. So it's not just getting there, which is congratulations, you didn't die yet. Okay, now can you make your way back? I know you have a little habitat built and it's a little safety shelter. And you're attempting to colonize it. What does that mean necessarily, that you're building structures? Hopefully we'd send machines No, there. actually colonization is not structures. Colonization is life. Right. So you're going to start having sex with somebody there having no, a Mar- martian no, baby no robert how about how about some plants and- <laughs> <laughs> oh if you're on a different planet it don't count <laughs> robert how about some plants and vegetables for a start <laughs> okay but you for that you would need to start building structures because it yes. won't exist in You'd open have to air have an economy actually <laughs> In and order and for it to be and, and an ecology, yeah, an ecology. Ecology as well. is, yeah. You'd, you'd have, have to have the right which, soil, which is why that the materials for building the structures are going to get there ahead of us humans, preferably us, with robots building everything ahead of us. Right? They land a, a building, kind of builds itself. You have a rover. It comes. It moves things over. It drives before you. When you arrive, it's like a hotel that's already set up. Oh, well, what they're what they're talk what they're talking about at least from the spaceship potential, is like a big, something the size of a big van. However, it opens up and then you have what are like parachutes or tents on all sides. So it can end up being like five times the size of the van once you get it down there. Drop and pop structures. Okay, drop and pop. Fair enough. But 
those will still have limits. You're going to need to have... Everything's going to have limits. Yeah, that's the size. You're going to need to... Perhaps they could be connectable, though. Maybe you can drop in top five. Well, they, that's, they, they that's link the together. whole point. You they, know what eventually, I mean? they eventually all connect together and you start your civilization. But it seems that no matter what, you're going to have to be able to go outside such a limited habitat to... Of course you have to, to do outside. other work. Absolutely. And for that, you're probably going to want robots ahead of time to have already done it. All the dangerous work. Anything that's dangerous on another planet, you have no backup. It, you have nowhere to go. If you run into a person with a gun, you got no one to call, right? So Here you we go with the gun again. <laughs> well, it's it's the survival mentality. You must survive, and when you have to survive, you're thinking about your basic toolkit, and when that includes is I'm looking out for my lodging, my health, my uh, safety. Right, especially after the colonies get going and there's more travel and you know the more opportunity for piracy and such. You and know? you can imagine anyone who's out there is probably crazy, right? Because who the hell would want to sign up for that, right? So if you're running into somebody out there, there's a good chance they're as crazy as you are for being there. You're mm-hmm. gonna want your weapon, all right? You need to get out more. That's all. Just <laughs> talk about guns. You spend too much time at home. Well, uh, <laughs> and and also, I, I mean, you would think at least in the early stages, even the medium stages. You're going to know exactly everybody who's on the moon, who is on the planet with you. It's not like someone's going to drive up and you're going to say, hey, didn't I see you somewhere before? I mean, you're going to know who they are. Right. Yeah, Yeah. that might be even worse. That's my... (laughs) You know, know who this I person. think that, unlike anything, you'd have to be careful of stowaways and that sort of thing. You have to be careful about that. Dr. Smith. <laughs> Dr. Smith, what is lost this? in space? space. You know, I space. hated that show because Star Trek was so much better. Don't tell me you lo- you watched Lost in oh, Space. Oh, I did. I watched them both. I watched, I watched, I watched lost Star Trek and Lost in Space. Uh, nah. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger, <laughs> danger. <laughs> Have you seen the new Lost in Space, the reboot on Netflix? Negative. Negative. I I saw the Lost in Space movie like 10 years ago with the guy from Friends. Right. Oh, Matt LeBlanc? Yes. Yeah, Yeah, Joey? I didn't didn't care much. Yes. How you doing? (laughs) (laughs) That's his whole career, huh? That's it. That's all it takes to sum up his whole career. That's good. Yeah, but I haven't haven't watched the new series. It It didn't look that good to me. I wasn't that impressed with it, so no. It was okay. I do like uh, all the space shows that I, I get to see. There are a lot of documentaries, uh, educational stuff too. And who would have thought you get older and all these educational things about space become what you want to watch? I was never a Star Wars guy, but of course Mike and I were were uh, still remain to this day uh, original Star Trek Trekkies. So we'll quote it. Mike, back Mike and, and I can quote you. I thought you preferred to be called a Trekker. I thought a Trekkie was like a derogatory. No, no, Trekkies. We're Trekkies. Proud, stone, proud knives, of it. stone knives, stone and knives, bear and bearskins. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. What that that was the first, for the first time we realized we connected with Star Trek because I we, right. we were we worked together. And we worked in the same show, office. I, think and I was one... describing our computer, mm-hmm. and I, I was so fed up with the computer, I wanted to throw it out the window. And I said that I was working with stone knives and bearskins, and he looks at me like, "Yeah." From that episode when yeah. they were stranded on that planet. Yeah, and he named the uh, <laughs> uh-huh. he named the episode. So it was like a nerd bromance. Uh, yeah, definitely a bromance. <laughs> Gotcha. And uh, that show, I think, won the Peabody Award. I, I it was the made. best Star Trek. Uh, and uh, who played Edith Keeler? It's it was Joan what? Collins. Joan Collins played That's Edith right. Keeler. That's right. She sure did. That's yeah. right. And yeah, that was a great. That was a great series. It was Wonderful. such a great series. There so were some lousy ones, time. but it was called City on the Edge. Of C- City on the Edge of Forever. Thank you for Thank City on the Edge of Forever. I'm so happy that I could bring this all up for you to reminisce. Yeah, right, and <laughs> and it was the, the name of the machine that got him back there is called Guardian. The Guardian, yes. That's right. I remember all the controversy when uh, Captain Kirk had to kiss Lieutenant. Had the, had, had the kiss. Right. The first, the first interracial, interracial kiss. Right, exactly. Kiss. Great. exactly. 1967, <laughs> I believe. <laughs> nice. Yeah, very groundbreaking show. Very groundbreaking. The Academicians. Hey, but, I, hey, I think Work Comp Matters is a groundbreaking show. Okay? Yeah, sure, absolutely. we cover everything. Yeah, yeah. That's right. We've been talking about space travel for the past 45 right. minutes. Well, who to thunk it? Who to thunk it? I know, but it's fun because <laughs> this is where we're going. We're talking about right. autonomous vehicles on this show all the time. It's big news in California. Autonomous vehicles, absolutely. Right. And SpaceX is a big employer and big news in California, especially in Los Angeles here. Right, we always see something where we're sure we're going to get abducted next SpaceX time. SpaceX is a big employer, but Tesla laid off uh, a couple thousand people. Right? 
in one plant, but I believe they're okay. opening one in where is it? Nevada? Is that the new? Is that uh, the new location? Huge battery plant in Nevada. Correct. Right? Yeah. Who got that contract? Nevada did. Right, right. Yeah. I know people were fighting for that. Oh yeah. Uh, different states wanted yeah, him. Big time. But battery technology, you know, uh, automated vehicles like this, autonomous vehicles. Uh, this, is, this is the wave of the future. I'm only hoping that it could only improve. Uh, wave of the future, but let's take our time. Let's not go there well, too quickly. Battery technology needs to improve. I think you're not scared of that one, right? Your battery lasts Couldn't longer. care less. I'm talking about cars being on the road without a driver behind the wheel. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. But you know what? That's just me. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking out for number one, but I'm actually looking out for the rest of you too. And it has been another... Great show. And also, I don't mind saying uh, that uh, I am hoping uh, that anybody who's out there will uh, subscribe to the Work Comp Matters channel. Additionally, feel free to let Work Comp Central know uh, that you would like us back for a third year. I'm still waiting to find out if we've been renewed. We've got uh, eight weeks to go until the end of the year, and hopefully we do get uh, renewed. Um, my name is Steve Appel, and it's been a pleasure to uh, be with you for another edition of Work Comp Matters for my uh, right-hand man, Chief of Staff, Dr. Mike Zima, for the Best Dressed Man in Workers' Compensation, Mr. Ted Durden, for my protege, Attorney Robert Ozeron, for Scott Walton of Uncle's Studio on the board, taking care of all the technical difficulties, and of course, as we just said, all the good people back at Work Comp Central that at least continue continue to support and approve of this project, including but not limited to Leaf File and Jake Paris. We'll see you again next week for another edition of Work Comp Matters. 